Hello there, so I've got a lot to talk about as usual, and obviously I'm not going to be able to address every single topic in existence, you know, there are trillions of different things, well, quadrillions, pr probably even more things that I could talk about. So um, it's it's very tough to get around to everything, and unfortunately, because of the way things are, you know, you're probably going to have rep repetition here and there, because some of the things you're talking about are things that you uniquely care about, and uh, that's just part of the human experience. And uh, one of the main obstacles right now, as far as I'm concerned in in the world, is simply how we're stuck in one stagnant place. You know, like, I, I'm no economist or anything. I, I can't say exactly what somebody like Ronald Reagan did for the economy. I'm, I'm sure he wasn't as awful as he could have been. But I do know that, you know, there, is a, there was a such thing as Reaganomics, and that to a degree, that whole philosophy created the world that we're aware of right now, which is corporate dominated, right? We've got what could be called stagnant Reaganomics. And, and remember the, the philosophy, Re Reagan had the audacity to claim that the minimum wage has caused more misery and unemployment than anything since the Great Depression. That's an actual quote by him, by the way. That's uh, so. I mean, when somebody says something like that, you know, it's it's a little bit on the radical side, right? Like, how, how does how does unemployment and uh, the minimum wage re relate in such a harsh way? Well, you know, the minimum wage actually helps people in many ways. You know, I mean, it's it's just one of those arguments that's very see-through. Because obviously, you could say wages in general are bad. You know, I mean, but why are wages in general any worse than having a minimum wage? You know, it, it's, it's really one of those things that could make a person's skin crawl. But, you know, it, I think... Far too often we're stuck in this corporate mentality where, you know, you got to get rid of all the power of the workers and every last bit of the economy has to be dominated by business interests, you know, and uh, the super rich and all that. That's, uh, you know, I'm not really saying anything that new here, but, you know, it, it is the reality. And I think the Democratic Party should not further align itself with the interests of the billionaire class. And uh, apparently saying that make you like some lunatic or something like that on the fringe, you know, like I must be a, a Bernie Sanders Kool-Aid drinker or something. It, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the truth, you know, an observable phenomena, you know, the, the way that uh, basically corporations have, have got us by the balls, you know, they're calling so many of the shots and, you know, attaining so much of the power. They've They've got all this money in Washington and the special interests and the special treatment and all that. You know, you, you almost can't be a politician running for office unless you're in the pocket of the uh, proverbial billionaire class. So instead, I urge, perhaps naively, I urge the Democratic Party to move forward in unity with the people fighting for their voices to be heard and their demands met. And the, the people should be fighting against the growing wealth and power of the ultra-rich and powerful, and the people fighting for justice and dignity for all, you know, all that kind of stuff. Either that or the Democrats can just stop the act and rename themselves the Republican Party Jr., which, you know, I, I, wish, I wish it wasn't like that at all. I wish they were in complete stark contrast to each other. But unfortunately, there are still similarities, right? Yeah. So President Biden told the joint session of Congress on April 28, 2021, quote, we have to prove democracy still works, that our government still works, and we can deliver for our people. 
well, that all sounds fine and good, but, you know, that requires more concrete steps than what we have taken so far. And, you know, I don't want to sound like, it's one of those things where I don't want to sound like I'm pro-Biden. I don't want to sound like I'm anti-Biden. I just want to make it about facts and, you know, the truth and uh, policy and philosophy rather than party and personality, right? Um, so let, let's look at the future of the Dems and what I mean when I, when I say the word fight. So the Democratic Party and even people like Bernie Sanders should continually be compelled to heed all of the warnings that, you know, are, are provided against the corporate domination of, you know, the media, business, society, uh, thinking in general, right? There are reasons to uh, call that kind of nonsense out because capitalism is an ideology. And, it, well, it's, it's not just capitalism that could be critiqued, you know, that's 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 obviously part of it, but you know, it's just to a large degree, it's the idea that you know you you can have one class ruling over another. That's ultimately what is that issue here as well? That general concept. And remember, the opposition enjoys weak support on most actual policy, and only benefits from the so-called culture war garbage. You know, like the their focus on transgender people and, uh, you know, those uh, wicked illegal immigrants, that kind of stuff. So remember how Trump proclaimed that the GOP will become the party of health care, yet he did not actually create a workable health care plan and made it clear that that talk was just that. It was talk and it was a mirage that all but completely evaporated. And the most we can say about Trump in a positive sense when it comes to the economy is that he was not openly anti-vaccination. Um, but even that isn't so clear anymore as he's stopped even mentioning COVID vaccinations at, at his rallies. So at one point it looked like he maybe had some backbone by promoting the vaccine as one of his accomplishments even as his crowd booed him for seeming pro-vax. But unfortunately, now it seems like he realized he can't keep saying that, or he'd lose perhaps a sizable chunk of the QAnon and anti-vax portion of his crowd. So basically, he's chickened out, so we can't even give him that much credit anymore about that. So anyway, th that could all stand in stark contrast with Democrats, if they actually create a truly universal healthcare system, like the vast majority of other countries on earth, and not just, you know, the wealthier top dog countries have it, but even some of the, I guess you could call them runtier countries, they tend to get some key stuff right about healthcare, even if, even if their systems are not perfect, you know, uh, my suggestion is to fight harder, not easier. So doing your best is not always true. And as an actual citizenry, I think we could always be doing better. And uh, we need to fight for our country and our future. And I know every politician can and will say that, be it Trump or Mike Bloomberg. And I know that, you know, using the word fight these days is even controversial. I know Trump said fight like hell and some people wanted to get him in deep trouble for that you know, that use of language. But I think context matters here. I mean fight as in constantly work toward some key goals that improve society. And speaking against a lot of bad policies and culture war garbage, that take us further down the path of human folly. So, you know, we can fight with humility and courage to a degree. Stop looking to corporate media for support and instead take the fight to the people. Remember, we're, we were strong enough to fight the pandemic with science and reason. So I mean that kind of fighting. And fight as part of a united and fighting people against ignorant forces that would have us frozen in time or even turning the clock back. And I'm sure if you've been following the news at all, you know what I'm talking about when I say turning the clock back. 
there are definitely some freakish forces out there that are attempting to do just that in a myriad of ways and and some truly disgusting and frankly kind of scary ways as well. It's time to retake this nation from human stupidity. The same way you don't want others getting in the way of your career path, sometimes you have to prove you are valuable by actually achieving some actionable goals. You know, don't just make my words here empty, stereotypical rhetoric. I think uh, the fight starts, you know, when we actually do things. And uh, talking is important, but, you know, there there needs to be some actual organization here, some bottom-up rather than top-down stuff going on. And, you know, I can just hear the headlines as Republicans would portray them, you know, as, as far as democracy goes. They would say Marxist youth and socialist Democrats call it time to join democracy fight. You know, that would be their headline or something like that. But, you know, you can put all those political labels aside and just uh, look at it as the little guy versus the big guy. You know, who has the power? Well, it's the corporations and these uh, politicians and right now the so-called Christian nationalists who basically want to tell people how to live their lives. So that's really what is meant by democracy. It's not about, you know, socialism or Marxism or anarchism or whatever. You know, those are just terms at the end of the day that people could throw around. Um, it's not about Democrats or Republicans. I mean, those those labels do have a purpose, and we all use them sometimes, but they're not really at the core of what's important. I, I do think it's time to bring down the neoliberal fascist war monopoly party and have a more social democratic society, though. You know, even though I just contradicted myself by putting those labels down for you. But, uh, you know, I, th I think they do have meaning. And uh, if we actually do the policies that create us as a more social democratic society, that matters more than, you know, the uh, name calling and the labeling. I, I know some angry revolutionary types will mock me for rejecting, you know, revolutionary rhetoric and s some would be like, well, how come there are no calls for violence or whatever? But I still don't think that kind of path is actually needed. You know, I've never been that much of a militant or whatever. I think we're still potentially able to substantially improve things without additional political violence or even supercharged rhetoric and any dumbass street skirmishes or radical cartoon characters whose ideas ultimately lead to limited action that probably ends up nowhere. So I think we can still at this point use ballots against the corporate prison siege of society that we see going on. You know, uh, so might as well take that route while it's still available. And you know, there is that great question. Has the Democratic Party been broken? Can it be fixed? Well, for me, it's it's not about party or personality, but policy and philosophy. You know, I'm, I'm not a Democrat. The Democratic Party could theoretically die tomorrow as an entity or live for another thousand years, and I really wouldn't care about that simple fact. What I care about is the fate of human society and how we're looking now and into the future. That's more important than sheepish party loyalty or personality called stupidity, right? That's really at the core of what I'm talking about. And let's be real here. Whether you're a fan of the Democratic Party or hate its proverbial guts, there is no single question about what happened to the Democratic Party. It is an abstract collectivist entity, like all political parties are, and really like all organizations are. Even if you are about abolishing political parties, in truth, you would really just be ending certain patterns of behavior and thought. So rather than playing some endless game of abolition whack-a-mole and politics, I think it really makes more sense to simply focus on creating alternatives to the worst aspects of society from the bottom up. 
and hopefully in the most organic fashion possible so it's not something that's culturally imposed, you know, forced upon people. So we're not artificially made dependent on the top-down approach. I, I don't want to be made utterly dependent on uh, political parties or politicians or corporate overlords. So that's really what it's all about. And uh, that's basically what I have to say about that. But here is where I want to mention the future of this little podcast as sort of an aside. If you'll let me entertain the silly notion that my own efforts have merit and uh, that people could hypothetically listen to them, you know, uh, what I'm saying. You know, obviously being a capitalist society, I need money just like practically anyone else. That's why when I write articles for websites or do this little thing here, advertisements are sometimes involved. And that's really just the nature of the beast. I don't want to grovel for money on my podcast or all of that because it's not dignified. However, if you do want to support this effort, go ahead and listen to more of these episodes. And hey, I actually can earn a little bit of money from it. And hopefully you will be informed and uh, to a small degree, maybe entertained by what I'm saying. I mean, who knows? So go ahead and share this podcast. You know, you can even print parts of it out for all I care. You know, like, <laughs> in fact, make it propaganda that the far right and the neolibs would want to suppress. You know, that would be, you know, if you want to convert some of what I said here into some slogans, if you want, uh, I'll, I'll be your propagandist. <laughs> you know, I also want more engagement. So pretty pleased with sugar on top. Let's have more of that. You can email me at wadewineo at gmail.com. And yes, that is also my PayPal email address. If you want to reward me in that way and make me feel like a sinister, greedy, hypocritical capitalist, go right ahead. And you can find me on Twitter by looking up my name, too. You can also find me on Facebook if you're not too disgusted by Zuckerberg at this point. I don't really have any use for Pinterest, and I don't I don't really know how to use LinkedIn or, Re or Reddit that much right now. But you can also look my name up on Google News, and you'll actually find articles I've written, uh, my entertainment writing stuff, if you're interested in that. And yes, I am vaguely famous, like not really famous at all. But, you know, my name is out there. I'm far from a household name, but I, I can actually say that I've interviewed some famous people at this point, and I make a little bit of chump change in the process, you know. I, I like to call it cappuccino money or whatever, <laughs> you know, just a few extra bucks. Uh, so I, I know this is all only tangentially related to the greater aspects of this episode, but God damn it, you know, you you push me to this point where I have to point out how to engage with me because the engagement has been low. So yes, smash the like and subscribe button. There I said it. Are you happy? <laughs>